What's going on everyone, Vindy here, and today I'm going to be talking about Zolgrub. Now I wanted to wait to upload this video to make sure that the guide I'm bringing you is the most efficient pool there is today instead of spamming videos on YouTube that you have to sift through to find the best one. Not to mention I try my absolute best to edit these videos to make them as in-depth as possible so you guys can learn this pool and go make some gold. Now with that being said, this is the best way that I've found to farm ZG and also boost ZG. I will go over how to farm piles for your blood scythe and voodoo dolls at the end of the video as well. When doing this boost, people on my server charge anywhere from 20 to 25 gold per run. With boosting, you can make upwards of 500 gold per hour and earn up to 130,000 experience per hour. First, I'm going to show you the pathing I take to get to the pulling position and the reset spots you will need to know along the way. Then, I'm going to show you the pull itself. Next, I'm going to show you how to recover if you mess up during the pull. After that, I'm going to show you a bonus pull with troll mobs. Lastly, I'm going to touch on a few piles that you can farm to maximize your loot while you're boosting or farming in this raid. Let's get right into it. First thing we need to touch on is the patrols in ZG. This patrol right here needs to be heading back in his pathing when you head to the starting position. That way, by the time you get to that side of the raid during the pull, he isn't in the way. When you first enter a fresh raid, you can head to the starting position immediately and he will not be a problem. However, if you wait before heading to the starting position and don't know where he is in his pathing, just wait until he reaches this point. He is on a 9 minute patrol. This gives you plenty of time to complete the pull. For the pathing portion, when you first run into the raid, buff up, pop your shields, and get slow fall from a noggin fogger elixir or a light feather. You will want to pull these mobs, hug the tree to try and avoid the rest, and then jump towards this hill. Once you land, run towards the big tree and the bamboo. Jump in between these two and this is your first reset spot. When boosting, you want your customers to mount up and wait until you pull the first pack. The moment you run away, have the customers run to the waterfall and jump on this rock. This is a safe spot and at this point, they can sit back and relax while you do all the work. From this position, you want to run along the right side of the temple. Be sure to be in the middle so you don't aggro the berserkers on the left or the crocs on the right. Now the last thing you have to deal with is the patrol. Polymorph the soul flare and blink through the mobs. Then frost nova to freeze the mobs, but more importantly you will knock the soul flare out of polymorph so you don't have to wait the entire duration. Hop down from the temple and run to this ramp. This is the starting position for the pull. The second reset spot is where you pull the tigers and the cubs. Just run into this corner. Be sure to be ahead of the pack so you are out of the melee range when running into this spot or they will hit you and you will die. The next one is right outside of the coil where High Priestess Venoxus is. Simply jump onto this route and reset the mobs. If you aggro ranged mobs, you will either have to ice block or run to a different spot. The last reset spot I'm going to mention is the Temple of Bethek. Run to the top of the temple and jump down to the second level to reset the mobs. These other reset spots are valuable to know and I will go over exactly how to use these spots to your advantage during the recovery portion of this video. Before starting the pull, make sure that this patrol is walking away from the tigers. He patrols from the tigers down this pathway. When he's in a position to where he won't aggro, drink Noggin Fogger Elixir until you get slow fall. Once you get slow fall, put on your ice barrier and mana shield. The moment you put on shield, don't worry about your mana. Immediately mount up and start the pull. You want to use every second of your shields as possible. First, you're going to face pull these two packs run up the hill, and run towards the tigers. Once at the tigers, go to the far side and round them up. This will group them up nicely with the crocs. From this point, there are two routes you can take. The first route is jumping straight towards this big tree. Then you run up this hill, jump on the tree, and jump to the right of the crocs. The other route you can take is after rounding up the tigers, run up the road, and jump to this camp over here. At this point, you want to wait for the pack to catch up to you. Once the pack catches up to you, you jump to the corner by the temple where the crocs are. This is where using every second of your shield comes into play. These crocs have a chance to daze and dismount you, so having your shield is a huge benefit. If you don't have your shield, you can still strafe run along the temple to help reduce the chance of getting dazed. Once you get to this tree, be at water level all the way up against the tree and blink. At this point, you will wait for the pack to catch up to you. Just like I mentioned in the extended Mardon video, you don't want to get too far ahead of them because you want a tight pack. Once you see them, wand the pack by the water and head to the top of the hill. Once at the top of the hill, 
jump from the top of the hill to the croc pack below. In this specific run, having a tight pack doesn't matter because we Nova them at the end, but if you are too far ahead of them, there will be tigers and crocs in the water that will hit you when you go to jump back to the kill spot. Once at the crocs down below, face pull and frost Nova this pack, then start heading up the hill. This is where the patrol I mentioned at the beginning of the video comes into play. He should be somewhere along his 9 minute patrol and out of your way. I will go over what to do if he's in your way during the recovery section of this video. Once up this hill, you will need to cast slow fall because slow fall from your noggin fogger will almost be out of time. Make sure you have a shield because the fish in the water hit extremely hard. I usually know them because they hit so hard. Yeah. Once you hop out of the water, don't blink. Save it for when you are in the water on the other side of this island. Once you get on land, just run to the left of the crocs. If they don't face pull, fire blast one of them. Do not use your counter spell. Run to the top of the hill and cast slow fall. If your shields are gone, then reapply. As soon as you land, face pull this pack and then run to the pack in the back. Counter spell this pack. Now in the video, I go on the inside of the tree, but you can go on the outside if you would like. Most people prefer that, to be honest, just go with what you're more comfortable with. Once you pull the last pack, wait until your shields are gone and use a limited invulnerability potion. Once the entire pack is on you, frost Nova and run towards the kill spot. If one or two of the mobs resist the Nova, don't worry, just Kona cold the mobs and continue like normal. Once in the kill spot, I like to stand right on these ropes. I face the ropes and turn my camera. When I hop up, I just jump and tap W and then backpedal off. Sometimes when you hop up, the mobs won't run away like they're supposed to. If this happens, just turn your character and backpedal a little bit. When you need mana, just rank 1 blizzard until they get close, hop up, and evocate. If you have to use a bunch of rank 1 blizzards, go for it. You're not strapped for time. You will easily cap this farm. At this time, I would like to shout out Grizzly Fetty who figured out the bridge farm for us. I'm lucky to have Fetty on my server and had a chance to watch him do this while explaining how he figured out this amazing kill spot. This is uh, Fetty. I uh, originally saw a mage on the China server using the bridge to kite several croc packs on the bridge. And I had the idea why not start at the back of the, the dungeon and pull as many mobs as possible uh, and kite them all to the bridge using the same strategy. So you just took what he uh, was using as a kill spot and just elaborated on it, made this massive pull that just changed the ZG farming. Right, right. Anytime you're using Blizzard instead of a uh, Arcane Explosion and Kona Cold, there's like a lot less RNG involved. So if you can pull more mobs, you're pretty much guaranteed to kill those mobs at the bridge every time. Yeah, I hate when I'm Kona Cold farming and you get resists. That's always horrible, especially the more mobs you have. Right, exactly. So, dude, that's huge. I really appreciate you coming on, man. I really do appreciate you, uh, you sharing this with us, man. It's huge for the boosting community. Yeah, of course. When you first initiate the pull, if you happen to pull the pack of axe throwers on the left, all you have to do is simply go to the second reset spot I mentioned earlier in the video. I suggest blinking so you are far ahead of the axe throwers so they don't throw axes at you while you're resetting them. If you happen to pull a berserker and are lucky enough to get some distance, you can also reset him here. You just have to make sure they aren't in melee range or you're going to die. For this part, if you happen to miss your jump and dismount, you can just nova the second pack and you will be fine. However, I use swiftness potions to try and minimize the damage I take. I create distance and continue like normal. On one run I was doing, I wasn't paying too much attention and I hit this tree while slow falling into the water. It sucked, but it made me realize there is a platform here that you can jump on if the patrol is in the way. Just jump on this platform, jump again into the water and continue like normal. If you're injured, you can bandage on the bridge before blizzarding. You shouldn't take any damage while killing, but just in case things go south, it's nice to have health to play with. When in kill phase, if you are still getting used to the jump and accidentally jump into the water, just run back and circle them up. In this clip, I take damage to show you that you will still live with full shields, but you don't have to Nova or take damage if you do it right. If you want to pop a swiftness potion, then that will give you the ability to create distance and get back into position without any threat. For the bonus pool, you need to make your way to the Devil's Terrace where Zanzel is. You want to make sure that the patrols are not in the way and heading away from the terrace. You want to target the packs of four mistresses. Two are patrolling and two are stationary. These mobs thrash and cast Curse of Blood on you, so do not get hit or you're pretty much going to die. Get slow fall from a Noggin Fogger, 
get your shields up and mount up. Aggro all of the packs while mounted and head towards the kill island. Then round up the mobs and head to the bridge. When killing, you're not worried about packing them as much as killing them. These mobs kill themselves, so the more damage you do to them, the more experience you get. Once all of the withered mistresses are killed, you want to reset the other mistresses. Jump in the water and swim towards the tree where the bamboo is, and jump in the first reset spot I mentioned. The first pile you can get is the pile by the tigers you pull at the beginning. The second and third pile you can get is in the temple of Pathek. Run to the top of the temple and go to the right. Attack the mobs down below so they run to the top of the temple with you. When they get to you, jump down to the second story. When you drop combat, immediately run to the pile and loot it. Once you get it, run up the hill and jump on the wall. Then you can run around and go back to the top of the temple. This time, go to the left. Same as before, attack the mob down below, wait for them to get to the top and hop down. Once you get the pile, you can run to the wall except this time you can't escape, so you have three options. 1. Shield and mount up and try and run through the mobs and get to the reset spot. 2. Pull the mobs and ice block Nova or just Nova to run to the second story of the temple and reset them. The last option is to just die. Personally, I hate the run back, so I reset them if possible. I usually go with option 2. I pull the mobs, ice block, Nova, and blink away and go to the second story of the temple to reset them. Well that's it for the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, do the whole shebang. I have a lot in store for you guys on this channel. Also make sure you check out Grizzly Fetty's original video in the description below. This is Vendi, I'm out, peace.